If you're new to Google Workspace, this video will show you everything you need to know to really learn every single app within the Google Workspace. Basically, Google has a ton of different apps, right? They have Google Drive, they have Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms, Google Meets. Basically, what Google Workspace is, is all those apps under one umbrella, right? So you could individually quickly jump between them. Now, you could use Google Workspace. That's the one that people use for work a lot of the times. But you could use all the different apps I mentioned individually for your home use, right? A lot of people write their docs with Google Docs. Basically, it's a word processor. A lot of people use Google Sheets instead of Excel, for example, for numbers or budgeting. This video will show you everything you need to know in one place. And this video is going to be in order. So I'm going to teach you Google Drive first before I show you Google Docs and Google Sheets. And by the time you're done with this video, hopefully you'll have everything that you need to get started with the Google products. And I'll also put timestamps in the description of this video. So if you need a refresher or if you just want to learn about Google Sheets and don't care about some of the other things that I'm going to mention, you could just jump into that part of the video. And you could just go ahead and save this so you could always come back to it and share it with anyone that might find it useful. I'll see you in the tutorials. Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you Google Workspace. Now, this was known as G Suite before and Google completely rebranded it and made it a lot easier and more seamless to use. So basically what Workspace is, is all the Google apps that you may have used before like Google Docs, Google Drive, Gmail, Google Calendar, all in one place under the Google Workspace umbrella to make it really seamless. Let me give you a quick overview of everything you get with Google Workspace. And you could go to workspace.google.com to come to this page and you'll kind of get an idea of all the different apps and platforms that are all part of Workspace. Now, if you're an admin or if you want to make this for your own company, you just click the admin console here after you sign up. But to get started, you could just press get started here and it'll walk you through some of the pricing options. Just to show you here, if I go to pricing, at least at the time that I'm recording this, these are the different pricing options for different size businesses and for enterprise, you could go ahead and contact them. But these are all the different things you get inside of a very simple bundle. Now, some of these are what you may have used personally. So Google Docs, for example, you've already used Google Sheets, but some of these are upgraded. For example, the G Suite Gmail lets you have your own custom domain as part of your email instead of at gmail.com. So you could put at your website.com as part of your email address. Google Drive is upgraded. You have a lot more space. For example, if you get this plan, you get two terabytes of cloud storage. Google Meet, again, has some upgraded options like 150 participants plus recording on calls in this plan. So you could kind of compare the plans on this page to see what's right for you. But it's not just that you get this bundle of apps that you typically get for personal use too, but a lot of them have upgrades that you don't typically get with any personal applications from Google. Now, after you've signed up, how do you access Google Workspace? Well, it's very simple. It's just like you did before. Let me show you. For example, you could go to mail.google.com and log in with that G Suite email and password. Now, if someone else set this up for you, you need to get this information from them. But if you do sign up, you'll see G Suite over here, which is the workspace, and you won't see the personal version. So it kind of looks identical to your Gmail, but you'll have some new options here that you could take advantage of. For example, here, you have a very easy way to create chats just by clicking this option and starting a new chat with your coworkers by typing in their name and email on their Hangouts here. Google Meet is now part of Gmail here, so you can start a new meeting just from this tab over here. And again, you can watch the video on the Google Meet to learn more about that. Now, this is Gmail, so you can still compose the emails, everything you've done before with Gmail. But now if you press this option, you could jump into any other apps like Google Drive. So let me show you that. If you go to inside of Google Drive, again, this is part of the workspace, Google Drive and not your personal one. So depending on what plan you have, you may have a lot more room here and you could create any new document from here. So 
Google Docs, Google Sheet, Google Slide, Google Forms, and more. You have all these different options. To come to any other applications from any of the other applications, all you have to do is press this icon here and you could jump into any one of these here as part of your Google workspace. A lot of them have their own website URL. So drive.google.com. The email one was mail.google.com. Docs.google.com will bring you to Google Docs or you could start any document over here. Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you Google Drive. It's cloud storage from Google. Now, if you've ever used any Google product like Google Doc, Google Sheets, Google Photos, you already have Google Drive. So if you've created a Google Doc, for example, or collaborated on one, you most likely already have it. If not, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get Google Drive. And it's free to use up to a certain amount of storage. So what's good about Google Drive is instead of using up hard drive space on your computer, you're using the Google Cloud, basically the storage that they offer you for free up to a certain point. After a certain point, you do have to pay for an upgrade. Pretty inexpensive. You could start with $2 a month, I believe, at the time that I'm recording this. So let's jump into the computer. I want to show you Google Drive, exactly how to create files, bring in files, invite other people, really everything you need to know to master Google Drive. In order to access Google Drive, you could just go to google.com slash drive and it will bring you to this page. And on this page, there is a business option you could learn about for enterprise businesses and there's a personal option. This is what I'm gonna show you where you get 15 gigabyte of storage at the time that I'm recording this completely for free. So go ahead and press this. Now you should be inside of Google Drive or you will see a page to sign into your Google account. Now, if you have YouTube or Gmail or any other Google application, you already have it. But if not, just go ahead and create a Google account so you could get your Google Drive. Now your page, if you haven't used it before, is gonna be empty. So the center area is only showing the recent files that I've created, recent folders, but I'm gonna kinda of show you how to do everything from scratch. So you could ignore this middle section here yours is empty if you're just starting out. If you've previously made Google Docs or Google Sheets or other Google type documents, you might see them here. But let's just kind of start from scratch. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna press new and you'll get all these options for creating folders, uploading files, and just creating documents here. The same option is available on this dropdown too, the same options that you see here. So when you press new, I usually like to just start with a folder. So then when I make different documents or bring in other documents, I could organize them nicely inside of the folder. So I'll press folder here. And let's say this was everything that was budget related. I'm gonna put in here. So every document I make related to budget, I'll put in here, I'll press create. And as you see right here, right on top, it created a folder called budget and I'm the owner of it. We'll talk about owners and permissions in a little bit. And it's gonna give me the date that I modified this every time I make changes to this folder. There's also a different view on this page if you like that better. If you come up here, there's this grid view. If you click it, it's gonna change the way you look at things. So it's gonna have, again, the quick access on top, which is your most recent documents, followed by folders, followed by files. I usually work in the other view, so I'm gonna go back to it. Now we could create multiple folders. So again, all your folders are gonna line up here. But next I'm gonna press new, and I'm gonna show you how to file upload, meaning there is a file on your computer that you didn't create on Google Drive, but you wanna bring that in. So I'll press that. And let's say I wanna bring a PDF, which is not a Google product. PDF is an Adobe product, but I'm gonna bring this in anyway. I could press open. And as you can see down here, it's uploading to my Google Drive. And I'll get the check mark right here. And let me press X. Let me just slide down over here. And this is the PDF way down here. And I uploaded it twice, so it will show up twice if you upload something twice. But it's down here for me, and it's a PDF file. I'm gonna show you something advanced at the end regarding PDFs, but you could bring in just about any type of file, movie file, video file, PDF file. It doesn't have to be a Google type of a file like the ones you see up here. Next, I'm gonna press new. You could also do the same thing to bring in an entire folder of files so you don't have to do one file at a time. You could also, when you file upload, let me show you another trick here. You could select multiple different files. So I'll select a couple of JPEG files, even a Photoshop file here. And I'm just control clicking or command clicking on a Mac here to select multiple different files. And I could press open and it will actually upload multiple files at the same time. So you don't have to do this 
one at a time. I'm gonna show you how to share this with other people and collaborate on files in a little bit too. And you get the check mark here. And now if I go all the way over here, I could see that these have been added. These are the three different files. I just added PSD is a Photoshop file. JPEG is an image. It will show me even the size over here, for example. And I could always sort things a little bit differently too. So instead of last modified, I could say last modified by me instead or last open by me and it will sort things a little bit differently here. I could also press this arrow and reverse the direction of the way it's sorting things as well. So I could see my files here now in alphabetical order. My how-to images are all now right here. Then let's go back to new. And this is how you would create documents. Now, if you create a Google Doc, a Google Sheet, Google Slide, Google Form, any number of these Google products, it will by default go inside of your Google Drive. So here I just click Google Sheet and you open Google Sheet. And don't worry, the other tab is still open. You could still come back to it and you're in the same place. This just opens a new tab for you. But if you just create a new sheet here and type in some data here, I could always go ahead and move it to my Google Drive. By default, it's already inside of my Google Drive already. Let me go back just to this tab to show you where it ended up. That document is called New Sheet. So if I come down here, I see that document already. I don't have to save it or anything. It just appears on my Google Drive. But the problem is it'll just be very disorganized. Like you see here, a bunch of different types of documents are laid out here. So what I could do is go back to that sheet here that I haven't closed yet and press this little move arrow and move it in the right place. So in this case, that budget folder I created, I could press that and move this document there. Now I could still work on this document, but if I go back to my Google Drive, it's been moved inside of this budget folder. So if I double click this folder, now I'm inside this budget folder and you see that file I just created and moved into this folder. And these little icons you see next to each one, let me go back to my drive over here by clicking this. All these different types of icons are created by Google Drive. This one is Doc, Google Doc. This is just a PDF file, not a Google product. This is Google Sheet, this is Google Form. So you get all these little icons where you could easily identify files and your folders are laid out this way. And again, you don't have to create any of these products inside of Google Drive. You could just go to Google Docs, for example, create that and it will just be here. No matter where you create those files to begin with, they will end up over here, but it's definitely a nice technique to press this move arrow and create those folders for yourself to organize them. There's also this star where you could star something. And now if I go back to my Google Drive here, there's a start section. I could click that and see what I've starred in the past. So if you wanna create a favorite section for yourself in your docs, you could go ahead and do that. Let me go to my drives tab. You could also do this over here by right clicking or control clicking, and you could go ahead and add to start as well to add them as a favorite. Now, since I'm showing you right clicking on different documents, if you right click on a document, you're gonna get multiple different options. So you could be able to open the document or preview the document. Sharing we're gonna talk about, so these two are related to that. You could go ahead and favorite or rename it. But one of the most important ones is you could download a document too. So it doesn't have to be on the cloud only. You could press download and it will download it to your computer. In this case, it converted it to Microsoft Word so I could go ahead and open it on my computer. So that's the download option and you could always remove it and that will move it into the trash can. And inside of the trash can, you could go ahead and restore it if you made a mistake when you pressed removed over here. And you can make a copy if you don't wanna work on the original for some reason. Let me just show you this little icon too, my computer under my drive. Under your drive, that's where everything you created or moved into your Google Drive. But my computer, this allows you to actually sync Google Drive to your physical computer. So then the same folder appears on your computer. I don't like this because it takes up storage on my computer. And that's why I have Google Drive, so I don't use the storage on my computer but that is one way to know that you can do this using a different product. I'll make a different video about this. Right now, we're just gonna focus on Google Drive and not worry about storing things in the computer. This kind of mirrors your Google Drive on your hard drive, your physical hard drive. And before I show you how to share documents, let me just show you the storage plan. Right now, 
I do have a paid option, but I wanted to show you the free option here. If I click buy storage over here, you could see that this is the plan that everybody gets when they get their Google account and they get Google Drive. But you could easily upgrade for just a couple bucks to 100 gigabytes. Now, I have this for my other account because I upload movie files and video files are much, much bigger than text files or audio files, for example. So this kind of became necessary. And if you use other apps like Google Photos, I have a different video about Google Photos, but Google Photos also takes up a lot of space. So this does get used up quite fast. And there's also other plans that you could see here, much bigger storage files. So let me go ahead and close this and go back. And as you could see here, I barely use the 15 gigs I have here because I'm only creating text files in this Google Drive. So now let's go ahead and share a document. Let me just show you a sharing icon over here. You see this little person on top of the folder? That means this folder has been shared with someone else. These other folders have not been shared with someone else. So that's one way to tell if an entire folder has been shared with someone else. But in order to share any one document or any folder, all you have to do is select that document or folder. You see how it's a little bit more blue here now, it's selected. And I have some options on top here that we haven't talked about yet. And the most important one is this little person share icon. Press that. And just like this, I usually type in someone's email address. And then on this drop down, I have three options. Do I want them to edit? So if you're collaborating on a Google Doc or Google Sheet, make sure that's selected. Maybe you just want them to comment on the work you've done or you just want them to view. You don't want them to touch anything besides that and not edit. That's the view option. So select someone's name or email here, choose one of these options and press done. So let me show you as an example. I just chose one of my other Gmail accounts here and it says add a note. So, so you could say something in the notes section here, notify the people, make sure that's checked on and you could go ahead and send it. Another way to do this that might be useful is there's a shareable link icon too. Let me click that just to show you what happens. When you press that, it creates this link that you could go ahead and copy and you could even message someone that link, for example. So if they're working on a mobile device, maybe that's a way you want to go about it. Again, this has the same drop down options as well. So you could see the drop downs over here for commenting or editing as you have previously on using the email option to notify them. And when you're all set, you could go ahead and press send. And I just wanna show you the email that that other person received. So it's gonna say that you invited them to edit the following documents and check out this Google Sheet. And then they could go ahead and open it here by just pressing open and it will open that document for them. Now you could collaborate on this document together or you could press share on top here and share it with other people as well. And it's gonna say it's already shared with one person, the person that I invited over here. And the same thing back in my drive here. Again, if I select this, you could see that it has the shared icon now. The folders have this little person and it's been shared with other people and it's a document like a Google Doc. It has a different icon over here. So the same things, again, get shareable link is over here and inviting people and the share option is over here. You also have a powerful search option over here too. So you could go ahead and search for pretty much anything here. So, so here I just search how to use Google Translate. I pressed enter and it showed me that JPEG that I uploaded earlier in this video just by using the search icon. Obviously Google is powerful with search, so this search bar does come in handy quite a bit. You also have this drop down here and you have a lot of different search options you could type in if you wanted to really tailor your search. You could even search in trash or your favorite section as well. I'm gonna press X. And the last thing I wanna show you is an advanced option, but let me go back to Drive. If you bring a PDF to your Google Drive, if you double click that PDF, it opens it as a PDF. Again, a non-editable PDF. But let me show you this other option. I just clicked off of it. If I right click, and that was the preview option, the double clicking got me to preview. I could go ahead and say open with and choose Google Docs. Now let me show you what happens. It's gonna take a couple of seconds here to scan your document depending on the size. And look at this, it turned my PDF by scanning it into editable text. So now I could actually edit the text or delete the text or collaborate with people just over here inside of Google Docs. That's a cool way to turn a PDF into a Google Doc and then have people edit and collaborate. Now this is not perfect, but it's really useful for being able to turn a PDF into an editable file right inside of your drive.
Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna focus on Google Docs and everything you need to know to be successful using Google Docs. Now, if you've never used Google Docs before, it's a product from Google and it's a word processor. So if you've used Microsoft Word before in the past, it's similar to that. Well, what's unique about it is you don't have to download anything. To access Google Docs, you just have to go to docs.google.com and everything takes place online here on your internet browser. Another way you could get to Google Docs is you could go to drive.google.com and here you could press new and choose Google Docs from the menu over here and jump into it that way. So let's jump back into docs.google.com. Here you'll have to log in using your Google account. If you don't have one, simply create one. And to create a new document on this page, we could go ahead and press this plus sign to create a blank document, which is what we're gonna do. But I wanted to show you that there are also templates. So if you're creating a meeting note, for example, or a brochure, you can start with these templates and there's a whole template gallery where you could see all these different types of templates. But I'm gonna go back in this case and we'll just press plus here and we'll start with a brand new Google Docs document. The very first thing I do with a Google Doc document is title the document. By default, it's untitled document. So if you double click here and just press delete, you could name it your own document. And then you could press enter and then that will automatically save the document to your Google Drive. So the way it gets stored into Google Drive, it's automatically saved. That's another thing that's different between the applications you download versus the applications that are on the internet like this. They automatically save all changes. Next, after you name it, you want to move it to the right place on your Google Drive. So if you press this little folder icon, it gets access to my drive, which is that Google Drive I mentioned. So here you could go ahead and create a folder and you could press the check mark right here to create that folder. And now inside of that folder, I could move my document here and it makes it nice and organized inside of your Google Drive. So once you learn about Google Drive, you could easily access all kinds of documents there in a nice organized way. So I usually name my doc and move it to the right place so I could find it easily later. So let's type our first sentence here. This is our first sentence. So you could simply type with your keyboard here and I wanna show you some of the basic formatting options and we'll get a little bit more advanced as we go. With anything that you type here, you have this bar on the top. So right now I'm using this font Arial, that's by default, but if I wanted to change my font, I have all these different fonts to choose from on this page and I could even press more fonts for more options. Then I have my font size. So here I have a bunch of different sizes or I could just type in my own size. So 34, press enter and that would change my font size. Then I have the typical bold, italic and underline options. So if I wanted to select my entire text here, I could make it bold, I could make it italic and I could make it underlined. So those are my three different options. And then next to that, you have your text color. So you could click this and change your text color here just like that. Let me go back to black and you have your highlighter. So that will highlight the text. For example, if I highlight a yellow and click away, it would highlight my text this way. And let me press enter a couple of times. You also have this text over here, this drop down. If you press this, you could choose from these options too. So if you want a title or a heading, you could simply choose this way, my first docs and I could go ahead and press enter. So that's how you would create a title, but just like any other thing, you could go ahead and just select it here with your mouse and change any of the options that I showed you. I'll come back to this option for inserting links and images in a second. Let me show you alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything here and press delete and I'm gonna paste text from a different document here. So I just copy the text from a different document. I'll come to edit and I'll go ahead and paste that document here. And let me just press this arrow here to close the side. So you can see the document here. And I made some spelling errors here to show you how to fix those as well. So here's basically just a description for this video that I'm making right now. So let's look at some of the alignment options here. So by default, if I select everything here, my whole document is aligned left. But if I wanted to align it to be center, I could press this option and it will align everything to the center of the document and everything to the right is this one. 
and this one just justifies everything left and right. You could also play with line spacing by pressing this option. So if you wanted to double space everything, that's the option over here. I'll go back to the single spacing. And then you could number things and bullet things too. Those are your options over here. And this is to indent documents. So if you wanted to indent a paragraph, you select that paragraph and indent it this way. And that will create this kind of space. Anytime you could press Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC to undo something that you've done in the past, you could also do that from the edit menu. That's the option undo and redo. Now let's look at spell check and word count, two options that I find very useful. So for spell check, if you come to tools, the very first option is spelling and grammar. So you could have the default spelling and grammar checked on right here and I'll select that and it'll show me all these options that I've misspelled. So I could either ignore things or accept things to make those changes here. So I could go through my entire document and make the necessary changes over here using this option. Then you have tools and word count, which comes in really handy. So if you select this, it's going to show you how many pages, how many words, how many characters you have, and you could press OK. And sometimes I like to turn this on over here to display that while I'm typing. So if I come down here and type more, you could see that my word count is increasing if I type more words, and I could switch that to be the character count that is showing me as well. So I'll go ahead and delete this and come back to my document. So I'll change this to word count. Next, let me go down on the bottom of my document here and I wanna insert an image. So there's an option right here, insert image, click this and you have multiple ways to insert an image. You could upload it from a computer. So if this is something on your internal computer, you could upload it from there. You could also search the web and you have these other options like using Google Photos or Google Drive, for example. Typically, I like to search the web and it brings this option here. So I could search Google Docs here, press enter, and it will pull different things for me from the web. So if I wanted to add this icon, I could just select it and down here press insert and it inserts it into my document just like that. Now I could anytime select this, resize it here. I could go ahead and decide how the text wraps around this image. So you could see a couple of different ways for that. And if you don't want it, you could select that and press delete. Here, I'll do one from the computer too to show you. Upload from my computer. It's gonna get access to my computer here. So for example, if I was to just select one of these YouTube thumbnails, I could press open and it will insert it for me this way. Again, I could select that and decide how it's gonna be visible or go ahead and resize it here if I wanted to. And you have some other options for images over here like cropping and images available here. Now I have that crop option so I could go ahead and do that and press enter and it will crop images for me right here on Google Docs. After that, we have inserting links which comes in really handy also. So if I select any text that I've typed out, I could highlight it and I could press this link option. And here I could type in a link. So for example, I'll, I'll type out my website here, howfinity.com, press apply. And now when I share this document, anybody clicking this link could go directly to that website. And it automatically underlines it and turns it blue when you turn something into a link. Anytime you could jump on here and remove that link here by just pressing remove link and it'll go back to the way it was. Now let's look at inserting header and footer. So over here, there's the insert option and we look at inserting images. You also have a bunch of other options that we're not gonna go through, but you could do tables, you could insert drawings, charts, but here we'll look at header and footer. So in this case, let's do a footer here. And as you can see, it created a footer option for us. This is the footer. So you could type your footer here. And then if I click over, this becomes my footer. And I have some options over here like footer format. So I'll select this option and I could go ahead and format it a little bit differently. Like the margins could change here and that's just how far from the bottom of the page it is by default. These are the options you get for header and footer. You could also make them different for the first page. I typically don't change anything, but I'll press apply here. Now let me show you this really powerful option over here. There's a little icon called explore. I'll press it and basically explore lets you search all the docs that you've created here or the web. So for example, here, I'll type in Google Docs again and I'll press enter. And you could see I get different options here. I could search the cloud 
This first option is actually pulling some of the things that I've typed out. For example, the Google Docs that I'm creating here is pulled up here and some other things here in my Google Drive. So that's where it's pulling this option. But I could also go to web and it will just basically use Google. So Wikipedia shows up here and some of these other options for what Google Docs searches show up on Google and you have images. So this is another way to search for images and just add them over here, like inserting an image just by pressing plus. And just like that is inserting that into my Google Doc. That's the explore option that comes in really, really handy, especially once you use it often. Now let's get to collaborating and sharing a document. This is one of the things that makes Google Docs shine. And that's up here. If you press share right now, it's going to say this is private just for me. So if I just doing this for myself as a word processor, this is the way to go. But typically you want to share a document. So press that and you could share it with other people. So simply type in their name or email address. So I'll invite my other account here and you could add multiple people. So just press enter or tab and type out other emails here and you could type a note. Can you help me? So this would be the note that will be attached to the email that Google will send. Notify people is checked on, but make sure you press this drop down because we want to give different permissions to different people. So if you want multiple people to edit the same project, which is possible in Google Docs, you could do can edit and that person will also be able to edit at the same time I am. It's a very, very powerful tool. You could actually see their edits live. You could then choose can comment. And then if you want someone's feedback and their comment, this is the option you would choose or can view. Basically, they can't make any edits. They could just look at your document. So if you're sharing this for 30 people to view, that's the option to select here. So nobody could make any changes to the document, even commenting. In this case, I'll do can edit so I could show you how powerful that is. And I'll go ahead and press send. And you should get a little notification here that is being shared with someone else also. Now, let me jump into a different computer. I want to show you in real time when someone else that you invite signs into Google Doc, what ends up happening. OK, so the other person I send the invite to has accepted the invite by clicking the email and now they have permission. So look up here, you'll see two different icons. One is just myself and the other icon is the other person I invited. And you could also see their mouse here. So right here, you see that pink little cursor here. That's them. So if they start typing, let me just use a different computer to show you. I'm typing here in real time on the other computer just with my left hand. And you could see that is showing here on my computer. And we don't even have to be in the same country for this to work. And this is one of the powerful ways Google Docs uses collaboration. So you can both work on the same document. So now if I don't like what they wrote, I could select it and press delete and it will delete it on what they're looking at on their Google Docs. So very, very powerful option over here. And even if you have 10 people here, anytime you could click one of their names and it will jump into that part of the document. And that's because I did give them the option to edit. So if I didn't want them to edit, I could just give them the option to comment and then they will have that option. So let me go to the share option. I'm gonna click it one more time and I'm gonna select this person's name, the other computer I invited. And I'm gonna change the permission here from can edit to can only comment. So I'll select this and I'll press save changes. So now I just typed a comment from the other computer and you can see now he shows up a little bit differently. He shows up in pink and he shows up as a comment over here. So if I wanna accept that suggestion, I could press the check mark or I could press X. So this is how you get someone else to basically use the commenting section to edit a document or make suggestions to it. So I'll press X and that section just disappears. So they won't have the same permission to edit like I showed you in the first part, but they could make comments, which comes in very handy. And you could look at all the comments here on the right side. And finally, let me show you a couple of different options under the file menu. Click this option. And one thing I want to show you is to download a document for a different purpose. So if you want to take this off Google Docs, you could save it as a PDF or Microsoft Word or any of these options here. So if I save this as a PDF document, it will just save it to my computer as any different type of document. So just like that, it's downloaded to my computer and I could open this as a PDF doc just like this and I could go ahead and print or email this, which comes in really handy. Let me go ahead and close this one and I'll go to file and let me show you how to print. So that's the last option on this menu. 
you could go ahead and select that and this basically just shows you an overview of what your document looks like and you could go ahead and select the number of copies choose if it's black and white or color on this option and choose your printer on top very very simple print option but it's one of the ways i use google docs often as well is printing documents and google docs has a lot more to offer and i'll continue to make videos about specific questions but I think this should give you a nice overview of Google Docs and how to get the most out of it. Hey everyone, in today's how-to video, I wanna show you how to use Google Sheets if you're a beginner to Google Sheets or if you're coming from other platforms like Microsoft Excel. And Google Sheets is free to use. It's a spreadsheet program and it lives online. So you don't have to download any type of software. You could just access it on the internet. And the easiest way to access Google Sheets is to go to drive.google.com which will bring you inside of google drive now google drive is basically the way all the different sheets and all the different types of google products get stored online so once you go to the drive website just sign into your google account and if you don't have one just go ahead and create one from scratch it's very simple and to create a google sheet inside of google drives just press the little plus sign here and go ahead and go down to Google Sheets and click it. There's also an option if you go over here to this arrow to create from templates. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do blank spreadsheets. If you go to the template page and if you go to the general tab over here, you could choose from a lot of different templates. Like if you're using Google Sheets to make invoices or track time or to do expense reports, you can start using these templates and not creating from scratch. And there's a whole bunch more over here like to-do lists and things like that. So maybe explore this page to see if something catches your attention. In my case, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna start from scratch. So Google Sheet, I'll just click it. And the first thing we typically wanna do with any Google product that we open up is title it. So right now it's Untitled Spreadsheet. I'll call this Annual Budget. You could star it and that will make it one of your favorites inside of your Google Drive. So it'd be a little easier to find. And what I do next is I press move right here, this little folder icon, click it. And what this does is instead of just putting it somewhere randomly in your Google Drive, you could choose where it ends up. So typically I like to press this little folder icon and call this whatever I want. And that will be the name of that folder. And I'll press the check mark. And now that folder is opened up and I can move that document here. So when I go to my Google Drive later, I'll know exactly where my Google Sheets documents are. I do this with any type of document I create inside of Google Drive. Now, before we start filling this out and going over the details here, there's also another option on the bottom of the page and it's the sheets here. So right now we made a Google Sheets document, but underneath that, you could have multiple different sheets inside of the same document. So right now by default, there's just sheet one. So I could click this little arrow down here and I could rename this document. So maybe this is called budget summary and I'll press enter. But if I wanted to have other pages to this document, I could press the plus sign and add a sheet here. And maybe this sheet I could rename to January. So if I wanted to do monthly budget breakdowns, I could do that by having many sheets here and the main one will be my summary. That's how you create multiple sheets, but you don't have to. You could just have one sheet, which is what I'm going to do in this case. And I'll just work on the main sheet here. Let me kind of just give you an overview of what you're looking at on this page. On the very top, you have A, B, C, D. You have the alphabet here, basically, that represents your columns. Now, columns go from top to bottom. So if I just click one and select it, this is column A. All this is part of column A. And then on the left side, you have numbers, one through as many as you like. So you could keep going to infinity here. But if I select one, you could see now this is selected and that's called the row. So inside of Google Sheets, you have columns, which go top to bottom and you have rows which go left and right and these individual boxes here the one you see selected in blue that's called a cell so cells rows and columns make up a google sheet and later on when you have a really busy sheet and you want to know for example which cell is this how do i refer to this cell you start with the column letter so b and then the row number so nine so this cell will be B9. 
Now, when you get more advanced and you use formulas, it is very handy to know which cell you're in. What's the name of that cell? And that's how you find out. Name of the column first and the number of the row. I'll go ahead and select this and press delete. Now, inside of any one of these cells here, you could have numbers, you could have formulas, you could have words, you could have sentences, pretty much anything you could think of could fit inside of these. So for example, I'll just call this budget. That will become my title. And I could go ahead and press enter and it'll bring me down a row. This will become my title. And then typically over here, you would want to put the different things that will go on these different cells. So in my case, my expenses would go over here and then I could name all my expenses down the list below. And then this would be my monthly cost for that expense. I could put that underneath that. And then maybe my yearly cost would go over here. And then we'll use some formulas to make things a little bit simpler. Now, one thing to note is if you write a sentence that's too long, this is a longer sentence that looks like it's going into the other column here. You see that it's too long for column D. And if I just click away here, it looks like it's part of column E now, but it's not. If I select column E and I typed here, column D is still intact and all those words or numbers or whatever you put here is still part of it. So you could have long sentences here and it's not going to disappear. It's still the whole value is still there. And anytime if you click one of these columns, under this FX tab right here, you could see the full sentence or the entire number over here if you wanted to see what was on the cell. If you wanna make it more organized on any of these, you could grab the little blue arrow right here. So if you just go to the side of any of these walls, get this blue arrow, you could drag and click to make these different sizes. You could do this with rows too. So if I want row two to be a little bit bigger, I could just go ahead and grab it and do it this way. You could always double click over here too and it will just auto resize it for you so you could read the whole thing if you don't wanna manually change the size. And here, let me put for example, for expenses, rent goes here and then the monthly cost for rent, let's say is $1,500. I'll put in 1,500 here and I'll press tab this time. And yearly costs, we'll go ahead and use calculations when we get into the formula section. So instead of me doing the math of figuring out what's 1500 times two, I'll kind of show you how we are gonna let Google Sheets handle that for us. And I'll go ahead and select these two and delete these. And just one more thing I'll show you before I fill out the rest of this page. If you type a word here, if you press enter, it moves you down on the column. So it moves you down one. But if you press tab, it moves you over on the row. So it's a fast way to get around by pressing tab to move left and right and pressing enter to move down. I'll go ahead and fill out the rest of this budget so we have some numbers to work with and we'll get to the next step. Okay, so I put more items on this here so we have more to work with. And typically what we next wanna do after we put in our numbers is we just wanna do some basic formatting so things are a little bit easier to read. So typically we wanna change our title. So it's usually on A1 where you put your title here. You wanna select this and you wanna change the formatting. So I'll go ahead and select it. And over here is all your formatting options that you could work with. Let me just make this page slightly bigger here. And I'll go ahead and I wanna make this bold and I'll just change the size here to be 18. So it's much bigger than it was before. And I want this to spread out actually. So I want it to be a little bit bigger. But right now I can't do it because it's just in the cell, but I want it to be across these three different boxes, these three different cells. So while it's selected, all I have to do is drag these three different cells. I just click my mouse and drag these three. Now the three are highlighted. And now I could go over here to this dropdown to merge. So if I select this and it says merge all, click that. And it turns all those cells into one big cell. You see how these little gray walls disappeared? So now if I select this budget, I could center this easily. And to do that, I would just come over here to the horizontal alignment. I'll click it and I'll press the center option. Before, if I did that, it would have just center it in this box and not all three boxes. Next, I'm gonna click here and drag on these three boxes and I'll go ahead and make these bold. But this time, let me change the color. So I'll change the color. You could change the color of the text by pressing the A option here or the color of the background, which is what I wanna do here. So I'll select this and I'll go ahead and make it green. 
and that selected these three and made them green. Now, if you want to do the whole row, just select the whole row from here, just press the number. You could do it with columns too. And then you could go ahead and press that color green and it'll do this whole row. Now, if I just scroll over here, you could see all the way to Z is green. If you ever make a mistake too, there's edit and redo and undo. So let me undo that in this case. You could explore more of formatting up here. All your options is laid out right in the center. Now, if you want to add symbols to these, so these are supposed to be dollars and I really want a dollar sign, but I'm not going to go manually type in a dollar sign. I'll just click this column here to select everything that's ever going to be on this column. And up here, I'm going to press the formatting option and pick currency. And I get the dollar sign and the right formatting for it being dollars. You also have that with percentages and others here. Anytime with rows, columns, or these individual cells and boxes, you could go ahead and select them. So let me select an entire row, row 12. You could right click right over here and you could delete entire rows here. You could hide entire rows or you could add rows below and above. So if I insert one above, it adds a clear row on top of the one I was just on. That one comes in really handy, especially if you forget to put things in order. You could just add rows or columns by right clicking on it and adding left or right on columns or below and above on rows. And you could always also click and copy an entire row as well. So you could just go ahead and copy an entire row, go to a different row and then right click on it and paste that row as well. So that will paste the same row. So if you want to duplicate different rows or columns, and this works with individual cells too. But in this case, I'll select this row and I'll just press delete to delete the content of the row. And let me go ahead and select this row. And instead of deleting, that will just delete the content. I'll go ahead and remove this by right clicking on it. And I'll go ahead and delete this entire row this time. And it'll move the other row up. Another useful option is sorting. So if you come up to data here, this menu, you could sort your entire sheet alphabetically. You could also do this for a range. So let me just choose sort sheet A to Z. I'll select it. And you can see it turned my entire thing from B all the way to W and it put it alphabetically in these rows. Now, the only problem is it also took my title bar and put it over here, which is not what I want. So let me go ahead and undo that. And the other option is basically you could select what you want to be sorted alphabetically. So I just selected everything here and I could go to data and I could sort alphabetically by range. I'll select that. And it took everything I selected and did it alphabetically without using this green row because I didn't select that row. And the reason why I selected both of these is because I want these numbers to move, but still stay on the same row as the actual expense here. If I just did this row, it would have changed it, but these numbers would have got all mixed up. So typically you want to just select the text and the numbers together like this when sorting. Now let's get into formulas or functions. One of the most useful things inside of any spreadsheet program. So let me just start with a very simple function of adding. So let's say I had a number 50 over here and I had a number 86 over here and I had a number 54 over here. And I want to add these together. So instead of using a calculator app or doing this in my head, I could use what's called a function inside of Google Sheets. So I want the results to go here. So I'll select this cell and I'll come up here to the functions tab. Some people refer to it as formulas and select this little down arrow. And I want to choose sum, which is just adding these numbers that I'm going to choose. I'm going to select that and look at what it does. It puts a formula for me, the equal sign, sum and parentheses. Inside of those parentheses are the numbers I want to add. So I could select one of them and then drag to select the other two and let go. And you could see that it added those for me. And if I press enter, it just adds these three for me. And let me go ahead and select this and press delete. Another way you could do it is again, I'll go over here and do some. You could select one and then while you hold shift, select the other and then the other. You get the same result, but if the numbers were in different places, shift might be another solution instead of dragging. Anytime you could select a cell that has a formula and then go up here to the FX menu here and see what that formula was that was added. In this case, I'm going to delete pretty much everything I added. I just wanted to show you one of the simplest formulas in any spreadsheet program, which is the sum function to add multiple numbers.
So let's use it in the case for our example. Let's say we want to see how much we're spending every month. So we need to add all this. So I'll come down here. This is going to be our total and I'll make this bold and I'll come to this box. This is where our total number is going to go. So again, the sum function is going to work. I'll come over here, press sum. And this time I'll click this box and drag the rest of these boxes and let go and press enter. So now it took everything that I put all these values and added them together here. Now I'll show you how to do one of these manually because these work manually as well. So I'll come over here to yearly cost. And this time we want to know that our $120 a month car insurance, how much is that going to be per year? Well, we just need to do this 120 times 12 and we're going to use the function up here. So I'll select it and typically it starts with an equal sign. So you just type in the equal sign and this time we'll just do a manually. So this cell is B3. So I know this B3, I'll type in B3 and I'll do the multiply option here, which is shift eight, the little asterisk symbol. And I want to do this times 12. So I'll type in times 12 and press enter. And it just took 120 times 12. If I select this box, I could see my formula up here. So B3, which was this box, I just found that from my column and row. And then 12, I typed in manually and that gave me multiplication. Now, instead of doing this for all these, look at this little cool trick here. I could grab this box here and drag it all the way down and let go. And it just created all those different formulas for me automatically. So 1800, if I selected, it just added B5 times 12. So this box times 12 and this box times 12 got me 420. All these numbers were automatically calculated by just doing that. Now you could do this with dates too. So if I type in 1, 1, 20, 22, press enter, I could select this box and I could grab this blue box on the corner and drag it down. And it just adds the dates for me automatically. It just didn't duplicate this date. It added the dates from that date. Very useful option when it comes to formulas and numbers and dates. Now, one of the main reasons that you use formulas is not just to do the math for you, but it's basically reserving that formula. So if my car insurance amount changes, let's say it becomes 150, all I have to do is change that monthly cost, press enter, and you see the math changed to 1800. So I don't have to ever do that formula again. It stays intact in my Google Sheets. All your formulas across all your sheets stay intact. So if the initial values that you type in change, you don't have to figure out the formula or the output again and again. Now let's get to sharing and saving. So by default, everything gets saved on your Google Drive. You don't have to ever press save like you do with softwares that you download on your computer. But you could come to the file option and you could actually make a copy if you don't want to alter the copy you're working on. And you could download it. And you could download it as a PDF or as a Microsoft Excel document. It can't be downloaded as a Google Sheets document because that lives on this website. But all these other documents are available. You also have version history too. So you could name your current version and then work on another one. And you could email it as an attachment. But one of my favorite ways to work on anything inside of Google Drive is press share. Go ahead and click this. And here, all you have to do is add people. Just type in their email here. And then you could go ahead and work on this document at the same time or just get comments from them. So for example, I just type someone's email here and I want to give them different permissions here. So in this case, I could basically make them an editor so they could work on this at the same time I'm working on it if we want to do that. I could let them comment so they could use the comment function up here or they could just view if I want to let people view it but not really alter or comment on it. And I would just choose that permission over here first. Then I will make sure they're going to be notified with the email and type my message. My documents are already being shared and I'll go ahead and press send collaborations and sharing, especially when everybody could edit the same document when they have permission is one of the most powerful tools inside of any Google Drive product. And that's the beginner's guide to Google Sheets. Obviously, it's a lot more advanced and the formulas could get really in depth, but I really wanted to give you a good overall introduction to Google Sheets. In today's video, I want to show you how to use Google Slides. It's a presentation platform and a slideshow platform from Google where you could create presentations for free and you could get a personal account completely for free. Or if you have G Suite for business, you could also get that through this website. 
The easiest way to create a slideshow is to go to drive.google.com and that will give you access to your Google Drive. Now, if you don't have one, just sign up for a Google account for free. And basically what Google Drive does is it gives you access to create Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Forms. And it's an online storage for all that work that you do on your computer. So to create a Google Slides on this Google Drive, you basically just need to press the plus sign here, go to Google Slide, and then click it right here. And it will open up a new window with your Google Slides. And this is the first thing I always do. Your new document is called Untitled Presentation. So click this and type the name of your presentation and press enter. And if you see by default, it saves it to your Google Drive. That's another nice thing about using these applications that are on the internet from Google. You don't have to save or worry about losing a file. It's automatically saved on your Google Drive. But the next thing you should do is you should press this move option, this little folder icon, click that. And you want to move this document that you just created inside of your Google Drive. So think about it as your computer and you're just organizing things in different folders. So I usually create a folder by pressing the new folder icon here. Give this a name and press the check mark. And now inside of this folder that I just created, I'm going to move my document there. And anytime you go back to your Google Drive, you'll see these folders here. So I put my Google Sheets in this one and slides and docs in different folders. So it's a lot easier to find. And you also have this little star right here. If you press this option and you go back to your Google Drive folder, you could see that under the star section. So if you click this, it's going to show the document that you start making it a lot easier to find inside of your Google Drive later on. Let me go back to my Google Slides and let's get started with creating our first presentation. Typically, you'll see this side menu called Themes. Now, I'm going to press X here just to show you how to get that back. You could come to the Slide tab here and then go ahead and press Change Themes on the bottom. Themes are basically a different layout for each of your slides and your entire presentation. So it basically makes it a lot easier to give your slideshow a professional look and feel without having to manually do a lot of work so you could come and scroll through some of these but let's say i like this one i could just click it and it will apply it here as my first slide and now that i've done that i could start creating my first slide as you can see on the left side i'm on slide number one and the rest of them are going to appear underneath let's just go ahead and title this one again these boxes are created for you using these themes so i could click here and type my title and then I'll type in this other box and anytime you could click away and then your changes will be saved. Now with everything that you type, you could go ahead and select that text, for example, and you have all these options on top. So one of the ones I use often is changing the font. So that's this drop down here and you could choose a different font. You could change your font size. You can make a bold, italic, all these options as you would typically find. There's the color option as well. So if you want to change the color, you could go ahead and do it that way. This changed the color of the background. And this is the text color here. If you wanted to change the text color, for example, you could go ahead and change it over here. You could also move these boxes. If you don't like where they end up, you could just click them. When the box gets highlighted, you could grab it here and put it somewhere else within your Google slide. Now, before we do more to an individual slide, I usually like to lay out my entire slideshow. So I have an idea from the notes I've taken that this is going to be a five slide presentation, for example. So to make more slides, I just have to come over here and press the plus sign. That will create a new slide based on the theme that I chose in the beginning of this video. So I chose this theme and my next slide is going to be based on that theme. Now, if I don't like that, let me go ahead and select this and press delete. You could press this little arrow right here and you could see different styles. Again, it's part of this theme. So if you want to change the entire theme, you have to do this over here. But if you want to add a new slide with a different kind of look, go ahead and select one of these options. So in this case, for example, let me choose this one here and it will create this as my second slide. So then again, I will give this a title. This is slide two. And then I'll create my next slide again using this little arrow so I could get a better layout of what my slide is going to be. 
I'll just do a blank slide here. Maybe I want to add a video to this one and so on. You get the idea for adding different slides. You can make as many as you want on the left side. And anytime you could change the order of your slides by just grabbing one of them and bring it on top of the other one. So it just changed the order of number three and number four. And this is the order when you present to someone, it's gonna show from slide one through slide however many you have. So it's important to know the order of how you want your slide. So in this case, this is gonna be slide three. You could also come over here to the slide menu and here you could create new slides as well. Well, one of the more useful ones that I use is duplicating slides. So if you wanted to duplicate slide one, with that selected, you could just duplicate that slide and it will duplicate it right underneath. Anytime you could delete by pressing delete and it will delete a whole slide as long as it's selected with this highlighted yellow. Now let's look at more formatting inside of a individual slide. I'm on slide two right now. And let's say we did choose a theme, but we wanted to change the background. Well, there's a background option for your slide. Let me click that. And there's multiple things you could do. You could change the color Right now my slide is white, but for example, let me just make it gray here and I'll press done and you can see that slide changed to gray. Now this is just for that slide that I was on. I'm not changing the whole theme. You also, again, if I press background, you could choose an image. This one comes in really handy. So let me choose this one and you could upload it. So let me upload one from my computer and it's gonna take a second to upload here. And now if I press done, you could see, let me go back to slide two. Now this Milky Way image is my background. Now I have to make sure the text in the foreground is white so it doesn't get lost in the darker background, but it's that easy to change the background for individual slides here. On that same menu background, if you do like that background and you wanna add it to your entire theme, you could go ahead and add to theme and press done. And now all your different slides will have that as their background instead. So if you have a company logo, for example, or if you're using this for a classroom, it might be nice to have a custom background that you upload yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the edit menu and undo a couple of times to get rid of that. So anytime if you make a mistake, that's your undo and redo under the edit menu. Now, inside of each slide, let's add images. So not the background image, but something in the foreground. So I'm gonna come over here and click right here. And to insert, just come up to the insert menu here. And you could insert all kinds of things into an individual slide. So images, you could upload them, which is basically exactly what I showed you how to do. So let me press upload here, find the image you want to upload, and then it will be uploaded just like this. If you want to resize it, you could just grab the corners here and just shrink it down. You could go ahead and move it around anywhere. I'll just put it right in the center, for example. I could always grab these other boxes and just delete them if I don't want them because I'm going to have the image take place here. And you have some editing options too over here. You could go ahead and crop it. You could go ahead and reset the image and you could go ahead and replace and format the image. The formatting options are kind of useful because they'll give you a bunch of different options like resizing it here. Let's go to slide three. What else can we insert here? Let's go to the insert and video comes in really handy besides images. So let me go ahead and insert a video. The nice thing is you could go ahead and use videos that are on your Google Drive. So you could drop any video manually onto your Google Drive and upload it there and then click that to find it. But one of my favorite ways is just searching YouTube. So I'll search how to use Google Drive here and it looks like my video is the first one here. So I'll select it. And let's say I wanna add this to my slideshow. I could just press select on the bottom and it will add it right here in the slideshow. Now on the right side, I could also change the start time and the end time, which is really useful for adding YouTube videos. And you can mute the audio if you wanted to not distract the presentation. So you have all these different options that you could explore for each video. And as always, you could just go ahead and grab this video and put it somewhere else in the page. And let me go to a different slide and let's insert a chart here. This comes in really handy because you could bring in charts from Google Sheets. And again, I'll link the Google Sheets tutorial on the bottom of this page. But if you press from Google Sheets here, now here it gets access to all your spreadsheets from Google Sheets. So if those had any type of charts, mine do not, but if they did, you could go ahead and select them and bring them in, or you could go to insert 
chart and then just make one of these charts like a bar chart and you will insert it into your presentation. And as usual, all the formatting options you have are over here on the right side. So you could go ahead and change the size and position and color. And if you wanna change the values, you just have to press this little arrow here and open the source. And that basically opens up Google Sheet here with that slideshow and you could go ahead and change these numbers and these values and it will show up on your slide. Very useful for adding charts. And let me create another slide. I'll just press plus here with this blank slide. And I wanna show you inserting images one more time and I wanna show you search the web option. Click that. And this lets you search Google but only pull images that are okay to use without copyright and licensing restrictions. So if I wanted to add the Milky Way here, I could go ahead and search for that and find these images and just go ahead and select one of these and then insert it. You see this insert option? You just click that and it will bring it into my slideshow just like that. And as always, I could press the format options here to get all these options on the side. In this case, I'll just go ahead and center this manually. And you also have the explore tab right here. Click this and it basically gives you recommendations for layouts. So in this case, it's telling me this is gonna look better if I lay it out a little bit differently. So I could use this suggestion and click that and it will make this full screen for me. Let me go to slide two and use the explore tab here. And with slide two selected, if I press explore again, it's gonna tell me what this should look like. So it's gonna give me some other options and I could go ahead and explore these and see if I like any of them. This one might be an interesting one here so I could select it and then I get this kind of layout where I could write more about my image that I inserted. Okay, let me go back to slide one, my intro slide and we're ready to present and we're done with our slideshow. I could just come up here and click present and it will take me to full screen and my presentation is now being displayed. So if I was to share my screen, for example, people could see my screen and exactly what I'm looking at. I have some options on the bottom, for example, if I wanted to jump slides, all my slides are gonna appear here and their title will show here. And I could also put the pointer, click that, and then I'll have this nice pointer. I'll turn that off. You could turn on caption if you want, and you could also turn on notes here, for example, which will bring up this other window where you could have speaker notes for yourself. So you could go ahead and add those when you create your slideshow. Let me show you where that is. I'll press X here and let me end this presentation here by just coming down here and pressing exit. So speaker notes are what appear right here underneath the slide, this box. You could put your notes right here. Again, if I go to present on the slide and if I go to notes, it will open up this window where I could see notes. Now this comes in really handy if you have two screens, for example, you could put the notes on the other screen and share this first window here, for example. And you also have this little arrow next to present. So present on another screen, for example, is available, which is a very popular tool. So if you do this often, it is recommended to have two different displays, two different computer displays. And finally, let me show you share. If you press share here, you could go ahead and add people here to share this with. So for example, let me just type another email just to show you what that looks like. And what you wanna do before you press invite is press this dropdown and give them the right permission. Do you want them to edit the slideshow with you? Do you want them to comment and give you feedback? Or do you want them just to view the slideshow? These are some of the best ways to share a slideshow and get the right permission to that person. You can make sure they're notified so they get an email to this email address and you could type out your message and then press send. And just like that, they could collaborate with you in any number of ways inside of Google Slides. This is one of the most powerful tools inside of any Google product like Google Docs and Google Sheets. And I use this one all the time. And that's the beginner's introduction to Google Slides. Google Forms is an online form builder that you could use for many different things. You could use it for education, for example, for making quizzes or assessments. You could use it at work for creating job applications, order forms or feedbacks, and you could use it for personal reasons for doing events, RSVPs, party invites, all kinds of different things. And you could also start from a completely blank canvas. So in this video, I'll show you everything you need to know in order to use Google Forms.
Now you could go to google.com slash forms and it's gonna bring you to this page and you could actually go to forms right from here. So click go to forms and then this is gonna bring you to your Google Drive. So if you have not set up a Google account, it will ask you to sign up for one, but you most likely have one already if you have a Gmail or if you used other products before like Google Docs, Google Sheets or Google Slide. Google Forms is one of those products that's inside of your Google Drive for free. If you're on a different page here, again, to get to Google Forms, you could press these three lines and then select Google Forms and it'll bring you here to the homepage. So most likely you don't have anything here if you haven't used one before. On this account, these are the ones I previously made. So it will auto save every time you create a form so you could reopen it back from here. But let's go ahead and create one from scratch. So to create a Google Form, you just have to press the plus sign down here and press new. Some of the templates I showed you in the beginning are over here, but let's go ahead and learn it from scratch by creating a new form. Now the next step is you wanna give your Google form a name. I'm gonna create kind of a multiple choice survey here about favorite apps. So by giving it a title, you could see if you click up here, it will change the title. So you'll always be able to search for it based on the title. You can add a form description as well, but this part, is not necessary to do. Now, let's go down here. This is basically where you could create your quiz or your questions, and you have a bunch of different options available here. So I'll briefly show you how to create your first question. So you would type out the question here under Untitled Question. And once you type out your question, you wanna actually choose what kind of answer someone could give you. So by default, I have multiple choice, but if I click over here, these are all the different ways someone could give me an answer if I choose a different option. So if I choose check mark, for example, you could see that's going to change that option over here. And sometimes short answers, like if you want someone to type in a short answer, you could kind of leave it this way. This is great for a lot of homework assignments, for example. And a very common one also is this one called file upload. If you choose this option, people could basically upload different documents to you from their own Google Drive, so you could choose that option as well. And it will look something like this, and you do have some settings here, so number of files they could upload, the size of the file, you could change that here, and they will be able to click File Upload from this page right here. For this case, I'm gonna choose Multiple Choice, it's the one I use commonly. So for Multiple Choice, I need to give someone an option, right? So I would type in the different options they could choose from, because in this case, they could only choose one, so this would be similar to what a quiz would be. And you could also add a picture, but I'll show you adding images in a bit here to a different question. And then you add as many options as you want here. And this one, add other, you could also choose this as an option and it just lets people type in if one of these wasn't what they were looking for. So you can add this as well. If any of them don't make sense, you just press the X right here and it will remove it for you. Then you get to the bottom here, it says required. So if you want someone to be forced to answer something, you want to check this on to make it a required option so people can't just skip this question here and they will have to make a selection. Now, once you're happy with this, you could either duplicate it, so you could then have this basically the exact same thing and edit off of that, or in this case, let's create a new question as our second question. So if you go to the right side over here, you have a plus sign, this is for adding questions. But before I do that, let me show you a couple of different other options. You could also import questions, this is interesting. If you press this option, it will give you access to your Google Drive here. So any form you previously created, you could select it and you could import questions from there. So you see the different questions from that form, I could select like this and import that question just like this. This is a really interesting option as well. Now this one lets you add another title and description. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the garbage can. I don't need that in this case, I need more questions. Let me show you this one, add image. With insert image here, you could upload one. This is just from your computer. You could drag an image file here. You could access your camera here on your computer go to your Google Photos, for example, or your Google Drive, and you could search Google Images here by just typing in something here and inserting it from here. In this case, let me just bring something that I'm gonna upload right here, I'll press Browse. Now it's gonna insert the image like this, you could give it a title. Now this is just going to be the image. If you want to actually add questions to it, you should just use this option, add a question, and then here, 
choose the image option from here to be part of this multiple choice question, for example. And you also have this video section. So if I press add video, you could actually search YouTube. So I have made a video on Google Docs, for example. So I could search for that. This is my video here. It just showed up number one. So I could select it and I could go ahead and press select to add a video. And it's going to add this section. So Google Docs tutorial. And let's go ahead and actually make this bold. So you have some options like that. And then people could just click and watch this video from YouTube. You could also upload it from your Google Drive. And I have full tutorials on all other applications on Google Drive. So I'll link those below if you want to see the complete overview of every single one, including Google Docs and Google Sheets. Let me jump into another Google Forms here. Anytime you could actually move questions and change the order of questions. So if you grab a question over here, I could make this the very first question, for example. And then I could do this with any of the questions I have listed below. And then you also have this section right here, add a section, you could click this right here and you could see it turned this to section one. And then if I come down here, it turned this to section two. So if I want to break up my quiz, for example, into different sections, this is a really great way to do it. And I'm gonna actually grab this question and bring it back to section one. So I have two questions in section one and section two could be a different type of a question. Now, let me show you some customization options. Right here on top, you have this customized theme. If you click this, you could change all kinds of things, including all the different fonts that you're using. And as you see up here, I have an image. So you could go to image uploaded right here, click that, and you could choose any image you want here and it will appear on top like this. Now you could also upload your own. You could change the theme color. As you see this bar right here, if I change the color of it here, it's gonna give the theme a different look. And this background on the desktop, you could also change the color of that as well. So those are your theme options. Now, once you're happy with the design and all your questions, what you typically wanna do is you wanna click this preview option. Now, this is gonna show you exactly what someone else is looking at on their account. So when you send this to someone, this is how it's going to look. But if you do test that out and answer these, it will save that as part of the results. So if you don't want your own answers as part of the result, don't answer. But in this case, let me go ahead and answer to show you. And again, it's gonna automatically save by the way, and you'll see real results in a second. And I'll answer this. And then if you see this next option, that means it has multiple sections. So if I press next, it's going to bring me to section two, which I didn't add any questions to. And then anytime someone press submit, it's going to give you the results. So now let me go back right here and to see my responses, I go to this tab over here. So this tab right here is gonna show me exactly the summary of how people answered my quiz or my survey. I could also go to questions here and see individual questions and the responses to each one and kind of go through it this way. And I could see individual people's responses here too. If I go over here and I see four different people responded and I could go through this as well. Now, if I wanna turn off this form, I could just turn it off right over here, not accepting responses. So if you go back and I say submit another response, it's not gonna let me do that. So make sure you don't turn it off here if you wanna keep getting responses here. And before I show you how to send this out, let me go to settings because you do have some options available here. So you could turn this into a quiz. This is gonna give you some other options here. So for teachers, for example, these are some good options to look through. I'm gonna turn this off since this is not going to be a quiz. Under responses, I could also choose limit to one response. So if you don't want people to go through this multiple times and submit multiple results, check this on over here. And then you do have some options for presentations like progress bar is really interesting. It's gonna show you what percentage of the quiz, for example, you completed, and you could collect email addresses by default as well if you want that option. Now, finally, you wanna send this, right? So the send option, let me click that to show you the options you have. So you could send it directly from here and that collect emails option is available here, which I typically have checked on. So you could type in different people's email addresses and press send. But a really useful option that I like is going to this option right here and this lets you copy this link. As a matter of fact, you can make it shorter so it's easier to look at on a email, for example, and copy this, so press copy, and then send this via email to your list, for example. 
instead of having to come over here and type every single individual email over here. But if you do go this way, go ahead and add a subject line, a message, and then you could include the form inside of the email with this option. You could always add editors on the bottom too if you're just inviting an editor to come and clean up this form or add their own questions. And the last option is right over here. This is if you wanted to embed this. So this is a HTML code. You could go ahead and embed this form inside of any website as well. But usually I use this option. I copy this and I send it to people and then I go to my responses and see how they're coming in. And if you click this icon, by the way, it will bring you back to the homepage and you'll see your previously made forms. And then you could press these three dots on any of them to remove them completely or to rename them. And again, if you want to learn about the other apps in Google Drive, like Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and even Google Drive itself, I do have complete tutorials listed below. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you Google Jamboard. So think of it as a digital whiteboard where you could draw, you could add pictures, you could add shapes, you could leave notes. And just like every other Google product, it's all in the cloud and you could share it and work on the same document with anybody in real time. Very, very useful app from Google. It's called Jamboard. In this video, I want to show you exactly where to get Jamboard, how to use it, all the different tools. And it's very useful for classrooms, for teachers and students, but I also find it very useful for just brainstorming or working on projects with other people. So it's also part of Google Workspace. Let's jump in here and use Google Jamboard. Now you could use Jamboard on your computer, Mac or PC, or you could use it on your mobile device. And to get to it, you just have to open a browser here and go to jamboard.google.com. Just go to this website here and log into your Google account. This is gonna save everything you create under that Google account in your Google Drive. To use a Jamboard, all you have to do on this page is press the plus sign on the very bottom and it says create a new jam. So let's go ahead and press that. And here is our new jam board. So this is our digital whiteboard. I'm going to show you all the different things you could do here. If you look on top here, the first thing you could do is change the zoom. I usually leave this on fit. So it fits the size of my screen. Then you could change your background. So if you want it to just be a whiteboard, you could start here. But if you need some guides here, if you're writing text or if you need a solid color background like black, you could go ahead and change that here. Now, this could be changed at any time. So you could use these guides to kind of design what you want. And then when you're done, just go ahead and go back to white and everything you created will stay. And this one is going to let you create frame that I'll show you in a second. So let's go ahead. The first thing we want to do is we want to name our jam. So go ahead and click over here and title it. So title this whatever you want and press OK. Now on your Google Drive, it's going to know this name. So it's a little bit easier if you do that as your first step of renaming your project. Next, let's look at the different tools we have here on the left side. If you press and hold on each one of these, you should get some more options. So for example, we start with a pen tool, but we have marker, highlighter and brush here. And each will have different colors that you could choose too. So let's go ahead and use a marker and let's go ahead and choose blue. And I could basically start drawing here whatever I want and go from there. If you ever make a mistake, you could just press undo over here and it will just undo everything step by step, just like pretty much any app online. So these are your different tools here. Let me just show you the brush tool on green. Next, you have eraser. If you choose eraser, you could erase anything that you've created before or just a portion of something that you've created before, which is a very useful tool. That's the eraser tool. Next, you have a selector. If you have multiple objects here, you could use the selection tool. I'll show you that in a second. Let's go to the next one with sticky notes. Sticky notes lets you add notes here and change the color here and then save them. And then they appear over here. So let me click away. And now with the selector, I could grab it and place it anywhere. Now with each sticky note, I could rotate it right here. If I grab and rotate it from this side, I could grab these sides and stretch it out to make it bigger or smaller here. And I could always press the three dots here to duplicate or to delete or to edit them. And I could jump in here and change the notes, second note, and I'll change the color of this one and put it over here. So these are very useful. 
After the sticky note, you have add image. Let me click this. And this is one of the useful things here because you could go ahead and upload any image you have from your device right onto Jamboard. You could do a Google search or even look your Google Drive if you keep photos there. Let me do a Google search here. I'll look up Chicago and I'll press search and could see all these images that I could get and I could go ahead and even change the type of photo that I'm searching for and even look by different colors here. Now I could just select one of these right here and then press select and it will just add it here to my Jamboard. And as usual, I could go ahead and grab the corner here and resize it and place it within my board. Now the same thing, if you select add image, you could use your upload option, select your desktop here on your computer if you're on a computer and upload an image this way and then place that anywhere that you want within your board. Now what I find really useful is uploading an image that I want to talk about using sticky notes to talk about it and then using some of these other tools that we're going to talk about to kind of annotate it with text or even use a laser to highlight in a presentation which we'll get to in a second. Let me go ahead and erase these two. Next you have shapes so right now if I press and hold down here I have multiple different shapes to choose from so let me choose a square here I could just go ahead and draw and when I let go the shape will be complete. Now with shapes you have some options up here that appear. You have your border color that you could change so green and you have your color of the actual box here. I'll make that blue on the inside so you could go ahead and change those over here. Next you have text so the text box will let you just click anywhere and type text and just click away when you're done. Again, you could use the selection tool to move it. Now, same thing with the text box, you get some options over here, so you could make them bigger here. You could go ahead and change the text color if you like to do that, and you could change the alignment of the text. Let me go ahead and just move it right in the center of this box here. And that's how you create text by itself that you could put inside of shapes or just have them out here by themselves. Any of these will have these three dots that you could press and you have some orders here to choose from. Now, if you get two layers, meaning you have multiple things on top of each other, you could go ahead and select this three dots and change the order. So now if I wanna send this to the back, I could select this and it'll bring it behind this sticky note. If I move the sticky note, you could see it's behind it. So you have that ordering that comes in really useful. And finally, you have laser. And with laser, if you're presenting this board, for example, or if multiple people are collaborating on the same project, which I'll show you in a second, you could go ahead and talk about something like this, and then it goes away. So it's not like the marker tool, where if you create something like this, it will remain. The laser tool is more of a presentation tool. You highlight something and it will disappear. On top here, you have a couple of options. You could go ahead and add another frame. So if I add another frame, it creates a new frame for me. If I press this arrow drop down, I could see the different frames and jump between them or add before or after a new frame. So inside of the same Jamboard sessions, you could actually have multiple pages here to kind of tell a story in the linear order. Anytime you could click this icon over here to go to the Jamboard home and you'll see all your jams over here, which are also going to be saved inside of your Google Drive. So if you go to drive.google.com, you'll see all your jams there. Let me come back to this one again, and let me show you the share options here. So you could press these three dots. You could go ahead and download this as a PDF or as an image frame. You could copy it, so you could work on a copy instead of the original one that you created and you could press share. Right now I'm working on a private one, but I could add people here to join me or I could copy this link and share this link with people to come and check this out. And with links, I could always change the permission type. If I press change over here, it lets anybody with a link can view it or I could change this to anyone with a link could become an editor too and work on this project with me. So before you copy the link, make sure you choose the right permission of what you want the person to do. In most cases, viewer is fine, but if you're working with a project with two or three people, you could choose them as an editor here. And I'll press done. And that's everything you need to know about Google Jamboard.
Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to make a website with Google Sites. Now, everyone has access to Google Sites and you could use it completely for free for personal reasons, for making a personal website, or if you're using this for work or school, you could also get Google Sites from Google Workspace, which is the old Google G Suite. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this from scratch, step by step, and I'm gonna to put together a real website I'll put that website in the description below this video because that website is gonna show you all the other Google products and tutorials for those. So if you wanna learn how to use Google Drive properly, Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Forms, all the Google products are gonna be listed below in that link. So click that, it's actually this website that I created. So we'll make it completed from scratch so I could show you how to add banners, how to add text, how to add videos and photos and make a really nice looking website from scratch. Now there are three different ways to access Google Sites. The easiest one is probably by going to sites.google.com and it brings you to this page or to the Google login page. You have to log in with a Google account. You could do this with your personal account for a personal website or Google Workspace, which is what I'm using to access Google Sites. The second option is on any Google website like Google Drive or YouTube, you could press this box right here or on google.com and then find Google Sites here from that page brings you back to this same page. And the last option is you could go to drive.google.com and this is your Google Drive. And you could go ahead and press the plus sign here, go to more and then add Google Sites from here. Either way, your Google Sites gets saved to your Google Drive. With any Google account, personal or work, everything gets saved to that Google Drive. To make this quick, let's go ahead and start with Google Sites. To create a site, all you have to do is press this plus sign on this page and you could go ahead and create a new site here. And there's this other option that says choose template. Let me just click it just to show you. There are a lot of templates available here that let you create a website and a lot of the work is already done for you. So this is definitely a recommended way to do this if you're starting out so you don't have to really worry about design. And you could see there's multiple categories for small businesses, for education, and you could choose any of them. In this case, I'm just gonna go back here because I'm just gonna press the plus sign and start a new site here. And I'll show you from scratch how to create a site and how to edit the site. And the very first thing you wanna do on Google Sites is you want to name your document. So I'm gonna name this document. And now this is getting saved to my Google Drive. Let me just go back to Google Drive to show you. This is the document I just saved and it appears in my Google Drive. So anytime you wanna find that same website to make edits to it, you could do it on the site's website that I'm on or the Google Drive website and it will bring you over here. Just make sure you're logged into the same Google account for all of this because different files get saved to that specific Google account. Let me go back to the Google site here. Now, before we make any changes, let me show you on the right side what we have. Insert is all these different types of elements that we could add to our website. And this is my homepage. And if I go to pages here, I could press the plus sign to add more pages. So it could be a multi-page website. It doesn't have to just be a one-page website. Right now it's just one page. But for example, if I press the plus sign to add a new page, I could call this about us page and then press done and it will add a second page. And then I could jump between the two different pages to make edits. But I typically focus on one page at a time and then go down the list of creating more pages. Then you have themes and this helps you change the layout a little bit. So you could change the color. You could see there's multiple options here. You could change the font option here as well. You could see that changed my page. And you have a few other options here, like this one, I could select it and it will change the layout of my page. So I'm happy with this design and let's get started with creating our page. Let's go back to the insert and you could do this step before or after. And that's the ability to share this with other people so they could work on this in real time with you. So I could go ahead and click this and it's gonna open this box here and I could add people here so they could edit in real time with me this document. Now this is the same with any Google document, Google Doc, Google Sheet, Google Slide, they all work the same way. So you could type in another email and invite them here or you could go ahead and press change here and change some of the settings that people have when you share the websites with them. 
Now I'm gonna work on this website completely on my own till I publish it live. This whole time, this is just private website on your Google Drive. No one could see this until you press publish right up here. Let's go ahead and assemble this page. Now, if you don't have any graphic design skills, I recommend using layouts. Layouts basically look exactly like you see over here. So if I wanted to create a layout that has two images and some text, I could go ahead and grab this and just drop it over here. Now the top banner I'm keeping because I'm gonna modify this in a second, but look at this, it just added this section for me and I could press the plus sign to upload any pictures here. I could select pictures that I have on my drive. I could add YouTube videos. All that is available right here, even maps and calendars. And for text, I could just type text over here. So these layouts are very, very useful. You could just stack multiple different layouts to make a nice looking website. Before I show you some more elements on the right side, let's go ahead and work with our top banner because that's the first thing people are gonna see. So if I come to this corner, it says add logo. So I could add my company logo here. Let me go ahead and do that. And it brought me to this page, brand images. I'm gonna upload my logo right here. And there it is, it just appeared over here. So I could go ahead and exit this page. And because this is on your Google Drive, you don't have to change anything and it automatically makes changes and saves it to your drive. This is great because you never have to worry about losing things because you forgot to save something. As you can see on the right side, it added the different pages for me. So it created this navigation automatically. And that was by creating additional pages and I create more, they'll appear over here. Let me go back to insert. You could go ahead and change this title over here. Now this is independent from the document name. So you could change this and this independently. So I'll name this Google Drive Tutorials. And you could go ahead and give this a title. I'll call this Google How To Videos. You could select any of these and then you could change the styling over here. You have some options with alignment. You could even insert a link if you want people to click this and go to a different page on your website. So this could send me to the about page if I want or any link to any website on the internet could go there. I usually don't make this a clickable link though because I don't want people to leave this homepage right away. Then you could change the background image from this default. So I'm gonna click this here and upload my own. And I made one here in Photoshop. So it says how to essential Google. So I could delete this text actually. I'm gonna delete this because I created this already in Photoshop. So this is gonna be my top banner here. And you could also, when you press change image, select image too. And there's a bunch of them in the gallery section to choose from. So you don't have to design your own. And you could always use Google Drive or these other options to bring in a banner image. So I brought in my logo. I named my website and document. I brought in the banner. Now I wanna do the rest of the website here. And I have inserted a couple of different layouts. Let's work with the first one. I'm gonna press the plus sign. And I'm gonna this time add a YouTube video to another Google product called Google Docs. And I just search how to use Google Docs. This is my video, I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna select it again. And it's gonna insert it right here, very nice and easy from YouTube. Now I'll label it here. I could go ahead and add more text underneath it, but this is fine for now, I'll leave it as is. I'll select this section and press delete. So this is all I need for that. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing with Google Sheets and looks like here's a couple of the different videos I have the mobile one and the regular one I'll use this one here and select and I'll call this how to use Google Sheets and I'll select here and delete this section so there's the top of our page right here with a couple of different videos but I'm missing a nice text to separate my banner from this section let's look on the right side and you have some options here like a text box you could select the text box and just like that, you added a text box, but I want this to be on top of the other videos. So I could just go ahead and grab it over here and select it and drop it down. And you see that blue line? If I drop it, it's gonna put it exactly where I want it to be. I'll go ahead and type here and let me go ahead and change the style here to heading. And I'll go ahead and align this to be center. And I'll make it bold. There we go. Now we have our banner and we have this section and we could actually select it and change the background over here. You see this option over here on the left side, it says section background. I could select this to change the background like this and it will look a little bit different than it did before. Let me see what the different ones look like. So we had white and then we have this one. This actually looks good. I'm gonna leave this as is. 
So I added this other layout over here. So let me go ahead and add three other videos. I'll fast forward through this and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, I added a whole bunch of videos here and these are all the different videos and tutorials I have on Google Drive. So I'm actually gonna publish this website so you could go ahead and watch all these in one place if you want. You get the idea here. You could go ahead and make a website like this using videos. And let me show you how to add images here because that comes in really handy. And again, I'll click this image icon over here and I'll upload one this time. And let's just choose one of these here. And there's an image, so I could actually change the size of anything I upload. I could go ahead and grab it. You could see it's letting you scale this exactly how you want to. And then you could do the same thing horizontally and vertically here to make it look really nice. So you could use this to design your website any which way you want. Now let's keep going down because you also have these other options here that we haven't talked about, but any of them lets you add more. For example, if I wanna add a button here, I could click this and name this something. And I could even link this maybe to a contact page if I made a contact page. And in this case, I'll just do about page and I'll go ahead and insert it here. And there's a button here that people could click and it will take him to whatever page I linked. And then I could select this actually and then go ahead and change how it looks. So I could do an outline or the text or leave a field like I had over here. And anytime I could go ahead and edit it. And I could just grab it and put it somewhere else. So I want this to be on the center of the page instead of the left right there. And there you have it. Now I added a button to this over here on the bottom of my page. You could do the same thing with just about anything you could imagine here. You could do this with Google Slides and Google Sheets and Google Docs. So I could select Google Docs, for example. There is one example here on my Google Drive. I'll select that and press insert on the very corner and it's gonna insert that just like this over here. So very, very easy to add different elements and anytime you could go ahead and shrink elements down. So I'll make this like half the page and maybe I wanna add a Google Slide to the other side. Let's go ahead and add this one, press insert. I'll shrink this down and then bring it up here. So it's very easy drag and drop kind of situation here, which is very, very difficult to do on other website creation platforms. You also have this option to create dividers. So if you think things are too close, like if this image is too close to these videos, I could go ahead and add a divider over here. So I'll select it. There it is, it created this line, created a nice divider between sections. And finally, I'll add an image carousel here where it lets you insert multiple images. So I'll go ahead and upload multiple images here and press enter. I'll go ahead and press insert here. And again, I could make this as large as I want. And let me go ahead and extend this out a little bit. And you could see with the images now, there's three dots. That means this is gonna play as a carousel. And this is a perfect time to show you how to preview your existing website. Right up here, there's this option for preview. Click it and it's gonna show you the website on your computer. So there is my banner on top that I put up here and then I could see all my videos. I could see my image, my button here, my documents. And then there's the carousel here where it gets this nice slider here where people could slide through. So there's my homepage just like that. The about page I haven't done anything to, so if you go over there, it's still that way. You'll have to edit the different pages completely separate. And you have this option where you could view this on a tablet. So this is what it's gonna look like on a tablet. And this is what it's gonna look like on a phone here. So you could take a look at it that way too. And it looks like my banner does not look good at all on the phone. So I do have to redesign or try a different banner that looks correct on the phone. That's why it's really critical that every time you make changes to your website to basically preview it to make sure it looks correct. So let me exit the preview here and go back to the website. So I could go ahead over here and on their header type, I could click this and change how this banner looks actually to make sure it's gonna look correct on different pages. Or if it doesn't, I could go ahead and upload a new one. So after you feel good with your homepage, again, go back to the pages section here, add more pages. You could always delete pages you don't want as well. You could make other pages your homepage so they show up number one. You could duplicate pages here. Very, very easy and you can make as many pages as you want again by pressing new page and adding them, linking them together with buttons here. You'll have this navigation on top. Really, really simple stuff over here. 
Now I should mention when it comes to using images, you have to make sure you use images that you have permission to use. So I typically buy my images from shutterstock.com. I have a link in the description to this platform and you could get credit here and buy all kinds of different images here. Some of the ones I've purchased before for different purposes, these for YouTube and these for other purposes like making websites. So you have to use images you have permission to on a website that you're running publicly so you don't get into any copyright issues. When you're all done here, you could go ahead and press this little person icon to share this with other people and get feedback or have other people edit or work on your existing website. Again, make sure you do check the preview here on different devices to make sure it's looking good. And I could go ahead and press publish now when ready. And I could give this a web address. Now it's going to show up at sites.google.com slash affinity.com slash whatever this is. So Google tutorial. Oh, it looks like I can't use the word Google here. So I'll just label this tutorials. And now that's okay because Google is a trademark word. So I can't use it here. I'll press publish. So now the website is actually published. And if you make any other changes to it, you do have to come back and press publish again. If you don't do that, the latest changes won't show up. At this point, you could press copy publish link and that will copy this link that you could share with other people. Now you do have to change one thing. You have to press this option share with others. And I do have to change this link type. Let me go ahead and press change because right now it's published. Anyone in this group can find an open, but I want to change this to public. I want this just to be a public website. Now the draft is still set to restricted here. That's fine. I'll just go ahead and press done now. And now I could click this copy share link and then copy this and then open a new window, paste it. Now anyone with an internet connection could access this on any device. And I'll put a link to this website in the description so you can watch all these other Google tutorials. Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to use Google Meet, sometimes called Google Hangouts Meet. Google Meet and what we're going to look at in this video is intended just for one thing, to have virtual video meetings, video conferences on your computer. They do also have an iOS and Android app that I'm not going to focus on in this video. So I want to show you exactly how to join a meeting and then how to host your meeting. Now to host your meeting, it does require a paid service from G Suite. So gsuite.google.com will have to be accessed and you'll have to sign up for a paid plan to go ahead and host a meeting. But it's completely free to join any existing meeting. So I'll show you that first, then we'll host our own meeting with our G Suite. In order to get to Google Meet, go to meet.google.com. I'm logged into just a regular Google account. So my Gmail account here, I'm logged into it here. And it's going to ask for a meeting code and I could access an existing meeting. This is not a place to host a meeting if you don't have Google G Suite. I'll show you that in a minute. But if you want to join an existing meeting, click use a meeting code and you should already have this from your meeting organizer on your email or they should have already sent it to you. So you could type that in and press continue and join a meeting like that. I'll show you exactly how the camera works when we host our meeting so you know exactly what to do when you're part of a meeting. So to host a meeting, let me go to a different account. So this is a G Suite account. It's a paid service from Google. So let me go to that website to show you. If you come to gsuite.google.com, this is where you could sign up for a G Suite account in order to host a Google Meet meeting. Again, not to join one, but to host one. So I already signed up for this service. So you could read about the pricing right here. It's a monthly fee for all these different things you get with G Suite. So then I went back to meet.google.com and I signed into that different account here, the paid G Suite account. Now I could press join or start a meeting. So here now I could join or start and I'll go ahead and name this Howfinity. Now let me give it access here to my camera and to my microphone. And let me show you some of the things when you're starting your own meeting and what you could do. You could turn off your microphone that will mute the microphone. I do have an external microphone here and I'll put a link to it in the description because it makes the sound quality a lot better than what your computer has built into it. You could turn off your camera. That's the top camera here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Those are the two big options over here. And then if you have sound, you'll see it right here on the left side. So when I mute it, 
I won't have that going on here. And the three dots will show you how to turn on captions. And if you turn on caption, when you actually host your meeting, it's gonna go ahead and kind of transcribe it for you on the bottom. And then you have your settings too, where you could change your default microphone. This is where I picked my external microphone. That sounds a lot better than the internal microphone. It's just a USB mic connected, and I could test my speaker too. So definitely do all these things with your audio and video. I have my FaceTime camera here. You could drop the resolution if you don't have a fast internet. That's all the options here on this page. And when I'm ready, I could either join now or I could go ahead and present. So if I'm the presenter, I will present. I could share my screen here or do individual application and just share those and go ahead and press share. And now I am the presenter and I'm presenting to everybody. Let me go ahead and end this to show you the other option here. Let me rejoin and I'll come back to this page here. And this time I'll press join now to show you what that looks like. And this is where you would have a meeting with video. The other one was to present your screen. So if you wanna have a meeting with video, this is what you wanna share with people here to dial into this number and this pin from this website, or you could copy the join info and send it to people, or you could add people here and go ahead and invite them from your list here or from their email or with a phone call. All those options are possible. Obviously with a phone call, they won't be able to video share like this, but with an email, they could jump into the same website basically to join this meeting. I'll close that. And let's look at a couple of the options that you have here. Again, on the very bottom, you could mute yourself to turn off the microphone. You could turn off your video. This is the same thing I showed you a second ago before you joined. You could end the call in the center. Now this will leave the call, but it won't end the call for everybody. They'll have to leave too. You could turn on caption. And as I turn on caption, it'll type out what I'm saying on the bottom. Very, very useful. I haven't seen this in other apps yet. And then on the left side, you could again get the meeting info. If someone's asking for it, you could go ahead and copy it from here to send it to other people. Again, I could press present now. That will have me share my screen, same thing I did before. And then on top, I could go ahead and add more people again just by clicking that. And you have a chat option here too. So I could press that and I could chat with everybody on this meeting right here. And those are both over here. Again, to invite new people or to chat. And I could also go ahead and pin myself here if I wanted to stay on top here. I'll go ahead and change that. Let me turn off the caption here. You also have this option over here. You could press the three dots. You could change the layout. So there's a bunch of different layouts. So if you have a lot of participants, you could see them a little bit better using this layout. So you could check out all these different layouts here. Let me press the three dots again. You could go full screen, turn on caption, settings. Go ahead and press settings here. Again, these are the things I showed you in the beginning. And there's an option actually to record this if you have one of the versions of G Suite here. So let me go back to G Suite. And one of these options here, I believe this one here, the business one video on voice conferencing up to 150 participants, lets you actually record the meeting as well. I have the very basic one for up to 100 participants. That's the main difference too with Google Hangouts letting you only have 10 Google Meet or Google Hangouts Meet lets you have a lot more, but it is a paid service. And you do have to turn on the option to record the meeting in the admin panel of G Suite. So if you don't have access to it, contact the admin that has access to it and they'll have to turn on the option to record the meeting that's taking place here. And it's really that simple to use this right here. Let me go ahead and end this call, leave the call and return to the homepage here. And again, I'm back to the homepage. So again, if I was joining or starting a meeting, I would click this. And if I had a meeting code here, I would type it in or I would type my own meeting rooms name here and start a new one here from scratch. I'll also put a link to this page so you could learn more about how Google Meet works and they do answer more questions than I covered in this video as well. I hope you found Google Meet useful. Again, check out Google Hangouts, check out Zoom, check out Skype and see which one is the best fit for you and your needs. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.